Welcome everybody to Change Your Sitting Habits at Home and at Work with Dr. Jared. We have an exciting webinar for you today. What we're gonna do is have a presentation from Dr. Jared and then some demonstration and then time for questions at the end. So hold your questions till the end and we'll make sure that Dr. Jared has the chance to answer them for you. And with that, we're ready to kick off our webinar. Uh, so please welcome Dr. Jared. All right, thanks guys, thanks for having me today. So today we're gonna to go through and we're gonna talk about some at-home ergonomics, things we can do to shuffle our workspaces around a little bit to help limit the amount of aches and pains we get from repetitive motions throughout the day. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and then we will, give me a second to jump back to the beginning here. We'll go ahead and get going. Folks, as we're getting uh, set up, just um, type your questions in the chat for Dr. Jared about uh, any of the aches and pains that you have as you, you may be working uh, from home, um, any kind of the, you know, the, the work at home habits, and even uh, the habits that you may have working at your desk uh, in the office. Uh, everything is on the table here today. We're here to help you and, uh, and make sure that uh, your work, whether you're at home or in the office, is, uh, is not hampering uh, your health in any way. So get those questions coming in and we'll be sure to have Dr. Jared answer them at the end of the presentation. Okay, right, but you, over to you, Dr. Jared. All right, so like I was saying, I'm Dr. Jared Beekel. I am a chiropractor here at Stuckey Chiropractic. I've been here for about a year now. And I'm originally from the Eau Claire area, went away for a few years. I'm from Oliva originally. Like I said, went away for a few years for school and nothing kind of, Felt like home like this did, so here we are back again. So let's dive kind of right into some ergonomic stuff. So just by a by a show of hands, how many of this, how many people does this look familiar to? This kind of sitting posture throughout the day, right? What are some kind of things that you notice that are very similar? He has kind of those rounded shoulder postures. He has a desk chair that sits too low, it doesn't quite fit him. His desk also sits too well, and he's using a you know, a computer with a screen that's very small, and that puts a lot of stress and strain on the neck as well. So, just kind of a few general stats about some ergonomics, right? So 80%, 86% of office workers say that they have experienced soreness or strain because of their office equipment or furniture, oftentimes from sitting in positions like this. 71% of office workers say that their chair has caused them back pain at some point in time. And this could be whether it doesn't go up, down, you're sitting in a hard chair, you know, one of those kitchen chairs that don't really do anything for your back or your bottom. And 41% of workers complain about having neck pain because of the design of their personal working space. So that is just some of the challenges that poor ergonomics can show you at home. When you guys think of ergonomics, what, what generally comes to your mind? If you want to type that in the chat or anything like that, for me, it tends to be more of a worker's relationship with his equipment and how this goes on to affect his work life and his production. Okay, so let's just throw a couple definitions at you about what ergonomics could be to you. You know, ergonomics is the study of workers and the relationship with the occupational environment. It's how you position yourself, how your equipment is utilized, and how your workspace is set up and how it impacts your health. And I think that's the biggest key is how it impacts your health. We don't think about that often. You know, it's it's just another day at the job is what we're typically thinking, but this can have long lasting effects on our health, okay? And ergonomics is a way to work smarter, work more efficiently with less effort and discomfort of the human body. I think we'd all like to be more efficient, whether you work off commission or not, you know, there's always increases in, you know, pay and raises based off increased performance. So it's always important to have that ergonomic space set up just for you. You know, there's a reason a lot of these companies bring in outside eyes to take a look at their setups and show how they could be working more efficiently. When they do this, this increases production. You'll hear a lot about it in factory, like factory lines increase in ergonomics. They'll bring in people to show how to better lift or how to stretch or anything like this to help limit, limit injuries. So if you're, you're limiting injuries, 
you're limiting the amount of days lost from work and this leads to less expenses for your bosses and for yourself. Okay. So some of the biggest mistakes while working from home. So having that desk, chair, or computer, monitor that sits either too high or too low, you know, either we're bringing our shoulders up here so we can get our arms up to type on the keyboard or we're sitting way down like this and we have to bring our arms up like this to type, right? You know, it could be having too much or too little lighting. So if we're looking at a computer monitor and we have too little lighting, what does that cause us to do? We have to squint to see our, see words on the screen or in a book or whatever we're looking at, you know, and if we have too much lighting, what do we do? You know, we can't put on sunglasses while we're working in the house on the job, right? So we're going to squint doing that also. When you're constantly squinting like that, you scrunch up those muscles in your face and it's going to cause chronic headaches. And nobody wants to deal with chronic headaches throughout the day, all right? So a lack of movement throughout the day, we're sitting in those kind of constant set static positions. And the next thing we're going to talk about is what a lot of this can lead to. What the most frequent thing I see is, is forward head posture. You know, whether it be, you know, our phones these days, are we sitting way up here to look at our phones? Are we holding them in improper positions? Are we typing on computers and desks where we're causing us to sit forward a little bit more rather than keeping our shoulders rounded back? So we end up, instead of having this posture sitting like this, we end up like sitting up here, typing up here. Okay, and now that causes a lot of stress and strain, not only on the muscles of the neck and shoulders, but this can also have lasting effects as far as headaches go, as far as low back pain goes. Okay. So let's take a look at some x-ray views here. The one on the left here is optimal. That's perfect. That's what I want to see every time. Okay. But you oftentimes when patients are coming into the office, I would say 80%, that's a huge number guys. 80% of patients have lost that curve in their neck, whether it be to a small extent or whether it looks on the picture on the right where it has straightened out completely. Now, Think of your spinal cord being attached to the back of all the bodies in the neck there. And as our head starts to pull forward, we start to put a little bit of, a little bit of stretch on that spinal cord, okay? Now, our spinal cord receives messages from our brain. Our brain is the center of everything, okay, guys? The center of our nervous system allows us to live on a daily basis. So as those messages flow from the brain into the spinal cord, they are like messages flowing down a river of life, okay? And if our head is sitting so far forward that we're pinching off areas of that neck, we're creating dams. If we create dams, we can't get that message out to the rest of the body. So if we can't get these messages, even from our brain through the structured spinal cord in our neck, how are we gonna get that out to the rest of the body? How are we gonna get it to our low back? How are we gonna get it to our legs and our feet? And we don't realize that this is the cause of a lot of our problems, okay? And you can also see here, the blue lines, so in the picture on the left, you can see how it perfectly lines up with the bottom of the fourth bone there in the neck. But on the right, you can see that it's sitting way forward. Now that's almost 30 millimeters of forward head posture, okay? So an example of this is, so if we got this blue ball, this is a 10 pound ball. So for every 10 millimeters that our head sits forward, you increase the weight of one of these in stress and strain through the base of the neck and shoulders. Are you guys kind of catching where this is coming from, how, why we really need to fix that posture and bring our heads back? It's huge, guys. All right. So let's move on here, and let's talk about some of these consequences. All right. So can anyone tell me what the number one cause of missed days at work is? It's going to astonish you, I tell you. It's low back pain. Low back pain is the number one cause for most missed days at work, most money lost at work, okay? Some of the other consequences of poor ergonomics can be fatigue, pain and discomfort, illness, injury, errors, and lower productivity. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want my posture, my daily posture, to cause me to make errors on my job. And I don't think you guys want me to make errors either, right? It can cause lower productivity. Now, we, like I was talking earlier, you know, if you work off commission, productivity is huge. You always want to be on the go. So you don't want to have any of that extra stress and strain. Now, fatigue. So many people don't realize fatigue is one of the most common presenting um, symptoms of a chronic subluxation. Now, a subluxation to a chiropractor is that bone out of place, that pinched nerve. So that's one of the biggest key indicators to us. It's like that aha moment. We got to check, we got to check a little bit closer. Okay. All right. 
So some of the most common reasons for chiropractic visits include musculoskeletal conditions, obviously the back pain, neck pain, headaches. There's that fatigue showing up again, poor sweet sleep quality and stress. Okay, so I'm just gonna shift this a little bit here. All right, so poor ergonomics equals musculoskeletal disorders. That's all of our muscle aches and pains, bony aches, and so two of the most common causes for musculoskeletal disorders are repetitive movements or overuse. An example of this would be carpal tunnel. You know, if a lot of desk workers are constantly working on a job, poor ergonomics, wrists always bent up, what's that going to do? It's going to constant stress and strain on that carpal tunnel, which a lot of times will lead to surgery. Now, I don't know about you, but I personally don't like having surgeries, so I'm sure none of you do either, okay? And some of these prolonged static postures can also cause pain on the body. I think a lot of people like to sit, you know, crisscross on their chairs, have one foot underneath them. And I wish I would have put that in a slide, just kind of a, an x-ray of what that can do to your pelvis, how that, how that can really shift your pelvis and how that affects your low back as well. All right, so an actual, a cool fact for this is 34% of all lost days at work in the US are due to musculoskeletal injuries, 34%, okay? Or related illness due to other poor ergonomic choices, okay? So I hope what you guys are starting to get here is kind of how big of a role this can really play for us and you know some game changers it can make throughout. So lower back pain, like we talked about earlier, it is one of the most common, it is the most common reason for missed days at work. So studies actually show that low back pain is clearly related to seated postures and sitting duration. You can see here on this picture with the spine on the left that this is a guy who is standing and he's leaning forward and he puts all this extra stress and strain on his low back. So if you're sitting in a chair, an optimal angle is 90 degree hip position to 110 degree hip position, which allows your hips to sit down a little bit farther. And this puts less strain on those low back discs and ligaments. As you start to sit more and more forward, you're constantly pinching down like that picture shows on those discs, putting more pressure throughout the body. All right, here's our optimal seated position, okay? So the biggest thing to look at is this leg supporting sitting posture. You wanna have some of that weight pushing through your feet at all times. It allows for forward and upward posture to transfer some of that body support through your feet. Okay, your hip angle, like I said, should be anywhere between 100 and 150 degrees, which gives you a slight tilt, as you can see in the picture. Your knees should be between 110 and 135 degrees. You want to have a forward seat tilt on your chair. I know that makes a lot of us feel like we're almost going to fall forward out of our chair, but it allows those hips and those knees to sit at their optimal position. This allows the opposing muscle groups uh, to be more balanced and the curve in the lower back to be maintained. Now, the other thing that I didn't write on there is you really want your elbow angle to be about 90 degrees. You want to have that proper desk height because like I was saying earlier, if your desk height is too high, what do we have to do? We shrug our shoulders. We already have enough stress and strains through our lower neck and shoulders, right? That's why so many of us say that we wear our stress through our shoulders. So if you're constantly shrugging your shoulders to tight, you're going to bring them up here. Same thing as if the desk is too low, you got to lift your arms way up here in order to type. And you want your monitor to be at eye level. You can see in the picture here how he's not pulling his head forward and back. He's tilting his head more up and down, which allows you to stay more in that position. Now, that picture for his head, head position, I don't think is the most optimal. He should have his monitor sitting at a level where it's neutral with his eyes because our head always wants to keep a neutral eye posture. So if you're constantly looking down, your head's going to tilt back in order to keep your eyes level because that's where the body wants them. Okay. So some solutions, what can we do to fix this? So move and adjust frequently. If you guys come in and see me, you'll hear it from me many times how key movement is, just movement in general, getting bones moving, getting ligaments moving, getting muscles back to optimal function, okay? Changing positions, moving from standing desk options uh, are always good ones. So 44% of companies in the US are actually changing so they're allowing uh, standing desk to be used daily. And it is, it is huge to go from that sitting natural position to standing. Because when we're in that natural position, we have that standing position, we have that natural tendency to pull our shoulders back a little bit more. Okay. So use a chair and her desk with adjustable heights. You guys have heard me harp on this throughout here, how important that is to move that up and down. 
So if the monitor is too low, put some books underneath it, bump it up. You can do the same thing as far as when we're generating that kind of forward sitting with our weight through our heels. If you're a little shorter and your desk chair doesn't go down low enough, put, some, put a couple books underneath your feet. That'll help bring those hips and knees up, which will straighten that back curve out for you, allow you to round that curve a little bit more. So if you're doing a bunch of typing on the keyboard, use those wrist rests. Use blue light eliminating glasses. I know they do make prescription blue light glasses now too, which is big if you're gonna be using, doing extended computer use to help limit some of those headaches. And use lumbar supports. That helps to keep that nice neutral 45 degree curve in that lumbar spine and in that natural neutral position. All right, so a couple different stretches you can be doing too. So I am going to talk through it a little bit here. And then once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to talk you through some posture strap stuff, what that can do for your shoulders. I'm going to show you kind of what a wobble disc looks like and things, different movements you can do throughout the day. Okay, so the purpose of the YWTL stretches is really to strengthen the rhomboid muscles. So if you don't know what the rhomboid muscles are, the rhomboid muscles are directly between the shoulder blades in the back. So it helps you, if they're stronger, to pull the shoulders back, which naturally has a natural tendency to pull your head back. Okay, and this is going to improve your posture by pulling those shoulders back. So this will also stretch the pec muscles in the front, allowing your chest to sit back. So for each of the different letters, Y, W, T, and L, you're going to hold that for 10 seconds for each letter. You're going to do that twice. Okay, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So the other one here is the six-way stretch. For most of us, the biggest effect that different desk positions can have is naturally that forward head posture. So we need to stretch those muscles out. So when you're doing that, uh, you're going to go three different stretches. You're going to hold it 30 seconds on each side. It shouldn't take you any more than three minutes. All right. So if it takes you three minutes, why shouldn't we be doing them? Right. It, we can do it three, four times throughout the day and it'll help to loosen up those muscles throughout the neck. Okay. And this here is just a sample of what that would look like for three different positions. And before we answer questions, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and I'm going to go through a couple demonstrations for you. Okay. So where should we start? Let's start with something easy. So this year, I'm sure a lot of you have seen them. These are called wobble discs. Now, this will allow you to set this on your chair throughout the day. As you set it on your chair, gives you a little bit of extra cushion. But not only does it give you cushion, but there's not air throughout it. So it's constantly moving, which allows you to kind of constantly shift and move throughout the day in your chair, which nat naturally provides a pumping motion to your discs, okay? And some different exercises you can do is literally just move your hips back and forth in all different directions. Go in a figure eight pattern, anything you can do to really keep things moving throughout the day. Okay, another thing we can do here is a posture strap. Now, these are relatively cheap. We sell them here in the office and they're fairly simple to use. It's just an easier way to learn to keep the shoulders back. I would not wear them all day or for an extended amount of time, but they're good for short bursts in order to kind of teach your, teach your body how to reuse things. All right. So let's see, I'm going to move this out of the way and just kind of shift back here a little bit. So all you do here, pull these both straps around the back of your spine and you just clip it in the front, pull it tight. Okay. And you can see here, I'll unstrap it. So naturally my shoulders want to sit forward a little bit more. But as we pull them around and forward, when you tighten that up, naturally it pulls your shoulders back. So you can feel that kind of constant tension through your pecs. Okay, and these are just a couple, couple of the very simple tools in order to help fix some of that posture. Now, let's talk through those YWTL stretches. The biggest thing to remember during these YWTL stretches is I don't just want to do the movement, okay? The biggest thing that's going to be key is I want to pinch my shoulder blades together the entire time. So you can see if I'm sitting here nice and lax, nothing, right? But if I'm pinching my shoulder blades together, you're already pulling your shoulders back. So with the shoulder blades pinched together, you're going to form a Y. You're going to hold that for 10 seconds. Shoulder blades still pinched. You're going to come down into a W, keeping those shoulder blades pinched the entire time. T, straighten those arms all the way out, still keeping those shoulder blades pinched, down into an L. Okay, and you're gonna, you're gonna perform this two times, 10 seconds with each letter. Fairly simple stretch, you can do it in less than two minutes throughout the day. Same 
with the six-way stretch. Like that exercise was showing, there's three different motions. Motion one is just gonna be ear to shoulder. So you can go ahead and put your head that way. Go ahead and pull. Hold that side for 30 seconds. Do the other side for 30 seconds. The next one here is gonna be, if I'm looking down towards my right hip, I'm gonna take my right hand on the back of my head, pull down towards that right hip. You should really feel that stretch right through here. Hold that 30 seconds. Do the other side 30 seconds. Okay. The last one, if I'm looking up into my left, I'm gonna take my right hand on my forehead, and I'm gonna pull back. And you should really feel that stretch come right through here. 30 seconds one side, 30 seconds the other. You do it in less than three minutes. You can do it three, four, or five times throughout the day to really help loosen up those neck muscles. Okay. And so like I was saying, that's the general gist of my presentation. Um, like I said, I'm with Stuky Chiropractic. Uh, if you have any questions at all for me that I don't get time or we don't have time to answer today and you want to ask me more, uh, my email is jared, J-A-R-E-D, dot Beekel, B-E-C-H-E-L, at gmail.com. Feel free to email me any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Great. Good. That was super informative, Dr. Jared. We do have some questions here. Uh, if, if you're ready, I can read them off to you. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay, so starting at the beginning of your presentation, you talked about a small screen. Um, what, is, uh, what is considered a small screen and what size should, should folks be looking for? So for me, I, am, I like to practice what I preach. I have, a, I have a Microsoft Zoom. So in this case, not so much. My Microsoft Zoom is about eight by 11, about the size of a sheet of paper. Now we really should be using those bigger desktop computer monitors, you know, more of that 15 or more of the kind of 12 by 15 type range. But a lot of times we're moving away from more of those computers. We get sent home with laptops, um, but the bigger, the better, honestly. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Um, you talked a little bit about uh, ergonomics. Um, if if uh, folks haven't heard that term, is that something that their HR department might uh, be training them on? Or is that, uh, was that just some scientific ba background you want to do? No, ergonomics is something that's been around for a long time. Um, any HR department should know what ergonomics is because they should be really focusing on the health and wellness of their, of their employees as well. Because if their employees are healthy, the business is healthy. So ergonomics has been around for a long time and it's just that general relationship between a worker and their environment. Ah, okay. And, and one of the things that um, got a lot of people chatting, it was uh, you had a stat about low back pain being one of the major reasons people are uh, you know, calling in sick or off work. Um, is there a typical age group that the low back pain tends to, uh, tends to affect more than others? There is not. Low back pain is just, it's one of those things that's always been here, right? It, it always seems to affect us when we're doing the smallest things. There is little things that we can do to help fix that, like being ergonomically sound. If you're working from a desk, chair, or computer, really staying with those hips in that 100 to 150 degree angle, really working through those heels. Another big thing that we didn't touch on today, but maybe we can get into in the future, is different lifting techniques. That seems to be the biggest spot where people will hurt their backs is due to improper ergonomics when they lift objects. I guess I could touch on that real quick now. So a lot of times we have a tendency um, to really just lean over and pick things up. So the biggest thing to do is not just come here and pick things up because if it's a box, a ball, something awkward, you know, you're keeping it all the way out here, which is putting all that stress and strain on the low back. So the biggest thing you can do is really bend your knees, kneel down, pick the box up, keep it between your your body's gravity right in between your knees and pick up with your legs more so than with your low back. And that'll help to eliminate a lot of those low back injuries. Mm, good, good, that's helpful. I, it, we should probably have a full webinar on that. So let's, let's put right. the, 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 the list of things to do. So um, further on, stand up desks. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Is there a particular brand? Is there, you know, should you be standing up, sitting down, say six, eight times a day? Like how, how is that best used? Honestly, if it were up to me, standing desk would be used 100% of the time. Now I understand that our legs get tired throughout the day and it's sometimes it's always nice to just go ahead and take a seat and just work a little bit from your seat. But as we stand up, we have that body's natural tendency to keep our arms in a 90 degree position. We keep our shoulders back, which naturally allows us to stretch those pecs and strengthen those rhomboids. And 
instead of our head sitting up here to look at monitors, a lot of times we can shift our monitor with our desk height up. So we're constantly looking straight at it. We're not sitting up here trying to look at things. Um, as far as the brand goes, I don't usually recommend too many diff uh, different brands. Um, this could be done as easy as if you're working at home. If you have a high, you know, um, a high counter at home that you can set your set your computer monitor on and work from that throughout the day. That's going to be so much better. Less strain on that back and neck than sitting all day. Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay. So we can kind of do it ourselves a little bit. Absolutely. Maybe. Put some books under those monitors or whatever you need to do to kind of lift those up as you move to a standing desk. Oh, good. Okay. Great ideas here. Uh, you mentioned a lack of movement. Um, it, does this mean we should be getting up and walking around uh, in addition to doing the exercises or, or what do you mean by, by the lack of movement and what should Absolutely. we So lack of movement, you know, that was key, the kind of the sitting to a standing desk is going to be big as far as movement wise goes, just because you're naturally standing on your feet all day. But they, a lot of people will always recommend if you're working a desk job, if you can get up once, twice an hour, even if it is only for 30 seconds at a time, walk around your desk a few times, that's going to make such a difference because it allows those muscles to stay warm and you're constantly providing that natural pumping motion to your disc as you create movement. Do you, well, you, I, I don't know if you touched on this or, or, or not, but uh, someone has a good question about like, how does hydration play into helping uh, you know, our backs and, and all our joints stay, uh, stay healthy throughout the, do the day? Is so hydration, water in general, is huge for our disc spaces. So the disc spaces are what keeps pressure off of all of our nerves because nobody wants to have that burning, numbness, tingling down their legs, down their arms. And water allows the body to naturally pump those discs up. So the discs are made of about 70 to 80% water. So as we go throughout the day, if, if my two hands here are the two bones and my disc is sitting in between these two bones, as we are constantly moving, sitting, doing anything throughout the day, you constantly are losing this space because we're not moving enough. And if we're not hydrating enough, we're gonna do it as well. So that hydration naturally allows the space to start to restore. Wow. And you mean good things like uh, maybe some herbal tea, water, you're not talking, uh, we, can't, we can't get hydrated by soda, can we? Yeah, no, most, no, we need a higher water content than, we, than there is in, in sugary drinks. Okay, fair enough. We won't, we won't jump into too much of the sugary drink topic here, but that is a topic for another time. Okay, all right. We've got more webinars coming out of this one. That is great. Now, there were, there were some products uh, that, that you talked about. You talked about some blue glasses. You talked about this wobble disc. You talked about the strap. Now, are those all available at, at, at your place of business, or should folks be ordering them off Amazon or a local retailer? Like, where, where can folks find these things that you would suggest? Yes. So the blue light glasses, we do not sell here, so I would recommend going to a local real, retailer for that. Um, the wobble disc. These things are pretty simple. We do sell them here. Um, they're not too expensive or anything. Um, so they're just good at creating extra movement. Straps. We also got that in office here. Um, literally, I think these things are like 12 bucks, maybe something like that. Something easy to just remind yourself to keep those shoulders back. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I didn't mention throughout, but a good one to work on throughout the day would be a thoracic roll is too. Those foam rollers, you just work on rolling your back between your shoulder blades to help really free up more motion because like I said, motion is key. That is great. That it brings us to the end of the questions that we had. Is there anything else that you'd like to uh, leave us with before we close out the webinar? Uh, I would just like to thank everyone who jumped on today. Thank you for your questions, they were great. Um, I always like to keep you guys well informed and by you guys asking your questions, that makes me think of other topics that I could really consider for things in the future to help you guys get some more answers as well. So I just appreciate you guys jumping on today. Oh, that's great. Absolutely. And if someone has not yet been to a chiropractor, um, is there sort of like a, uh, can you walk us through what happens uh, during a first visit in case we've uh, enticed some people to come and visit you for the first time? Yes, absolutely. So for us, we might be a little different than other clinics. Um, I mean, all clinics are a little bit different. For us, we have six different doctors in office, so there's always a constant high flow of energy. So with us, the basic gist is you call, you set up an appointment, you do a little bit of paperwork so we know ahead of time what's going on, where we need to focus. 
you'll have an initial consultation with your doctor where you'll come in, you'll talk through what the problem is, you know, how long it's been there, what's, what caused it, things of that sort. One thing we really like to focus on here at Stuki is that we really like to get past just the pain part of everything. You know, pain has a cause and we want to find out what's causing that pain. So we're not seeing you here for a, a couple of weeks. The pain goes away and we got to see you a month down the road because the same problem is back. We really want to fix that problem. So after you've had your initial consultation, we'll go back, we'll do an exam, uh, figure out some range of motion. We'll do a chiropractic EMG uh, that allows us to look at the neurological function of your spine through your muscles. And then we'll take a couple x-rays because we adjust based off our x-rays and we want to make sure we know what's going on structurally with your body at your time in your life to make the proper adjustment. Okay. And then adjusting comes down the line as well. I got you. Okay. How, how much time should someone expect to spend at an initial consultation? Uh, so for initial consultation for the paperwork, uh, consultation, exam, x-rays, I would expect to spend around an hour, a little bit more than an hour on that initial visit. Um, yeah. Okay. That sounds great. Well, folks, thanks so much for joining us. If you'd like a copy of the slide deck that uh, Jared presented, uh, you can contact us uh, um, at the clinic. Or if you're watching this webinar on, on replay, uh, whatever channel you're watching it on, just drop us a, a little note, whether it's on Facebook or any of the other channels, and we can get a PDF copy over to you. Um, if we have no other questions, we're going to thank you very much and close out the webinar today. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we'll see you soon with more webinars from Stuky Chiropractic.